Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends. And we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy because now it's time to rewind. Let's raise a glass of wine. Yes, my We're both lovely. drinking wine tonight on yes, Release Date Rewind. Goodness. Cheers to you, I'm Sabrina right. Santoro. You, Mark. Mark Sabrina J. is back. <laughs> yes, my my vampiric, mm. sultry lady Ooh. of. Well, I was going to say lady, lady of the, of the night, night, but that's that's is that not that's maybe like I'll derogatory. Take lady of the night. Why I not? mean, right? Yeah, I my, think, and, these black glasses. Oh on yes, she's got her bat. Gla sunglasses on now it, what <laughs> are they like bedazzled what's on the top of them yeah Sabrina? this is from um let me um do some advertisement this is from unique <laughs> vintage <laughs> love it and they i got them so when cute. i went to salem a couple years ago oh, yeah. so uh -huh. i don't know if you saw some of my pictures when i was just like but yeah love um it. i love them and they're bat wings so i felt like she had yes. to come out for a little bit i mean even if even if it was like march i would say bring out oh. the bat sunglasses i but would totally do everything right now right oh yeah year yeah. round yeah she's yeah. now and uh, since this is also an audio podcast you might be listening you might not be able to see sabrina is in this <laughs> awesome black and red what is that like a robe you're yeah, wearing it's kind of like i guess you i would love call it, it a duster um a duster you know what we used to call them i guess it's yes the 90s term but it's oh, like yeah. a robe yeah it's like um black sheer but with velvet velvet oh, right here like on the a very very appropriate for this kind yeah, of movie yes. dark red roses Yes, like blood and she's got like candles, yes, and I see a candles. gourd, some pumpkin action. I'm in the basement. Mm -hmm. I have some moody lighting. Oh I yes, hope, those of I you who like are watching, I hope amazing. can even see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you look perfect. I, think, I okay, love this whole vibe, this mood. Yep. This is definitely a good. Because Sabrina and I were just saying, I know that Halloween's <laughs> over. Okay, <laughs> many of you out there already have your goddamn Christmas trees up. <laughs> Not us, okay? We are still embracing. Yeah. And you know, mm -hmm. if anything, I feel like October, maybe just lately these last few years, or at least in my mind, like October kind of feels like, yeah, let's go all out, like, you know, crazy colors and blood and guts. Yeah. But November is sort of like an elevated horror. Kind of now that we're like kind of, bit. yes, I agree. Gothic, and maybe um, that's macabre. maybe that's because of movies. Yes, Gothic very macabre. macabre. Maybe that's because of Soul like certain movies central. like this yes. that have come out in yes. November in years past, you know? Mm -hmm. Even like Sleepy Hollow, Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow member was a November oh, movie. Oh, really? We I were love, talking about Interview with that. the Vampire. I love Sleepy Hollow. Oh, yep, Interview with the Vampire. It. Oh my gosh. It's very One like kind of like favorites. fairy tale horror month-ish, yes. right? Which is perfect for this. We're talking about epic love stories in November and of course mm -hmm. Bram Stoker's Dracula is the theme of this episode. Episode. But before we dies. get into all that, <laughs> love never dies, love right? Love never dies, no. God, oh boy, years mm. and years, hundreds of years, this love ain't dying. Let's rewind, Sabrina. You ready to take a oh, bite? I am, ah, oh, I am ready take a to bite. take a bite. Yes, right? take a bite yes. and get all gushy I have my, and bloody. my teeth Ooh. on my shirt, and it's so funny showing this shirt. I haven't worn this in so long that it. it was folded like in the back of my closet. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll wear it someday. It's got to be right. And I was like, oh. Today's the perfect day for it. Mm -hmm. Hello, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Let's yes. dive in, Sabrina. So before we nerd out about this movie and talk about what we love and talk about what we don't love, because mm -hmm. I do agree with you, mm -hmm. Sabrina messaged me as uh, any followers of Release Day Rewind, you know <laughs> that I had asked, I like to do this every now, now and then I did a poll, you know, who wants to talk about what? What are you into? And Sabrina was the first person to say, oh, Dracula. But she said Dracula is so absurd. Yes, and that was it's my, funny. a good word for it. It is a good word for it now that mm -hmm. I've rewatched it. Because I hadn't seen this movie in many, many years. Oh, really? I, watched it, I, watch it, I, watched I actually it. watch it every year. I know oh, every year you say. do. Oh, wow. Do. I'm so glad you're here then. Oh, this is perfect. Yeah. Oh, I do. wow. It's one of those movies that I just like even... Well, keep going, and then I'll go into it. <laughs> well, I, well, I, I was going to say, I hadn't seen it in years, 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 years. Really? Maybe, okay. maybe for a minute when it's on TV occasionally, you know, yeah. but as a kid, 
I was obsessed. Really? And rewatching it for the first time in years, it's I was like, you wow. Say that because I, I am remembering. I watched it as a kid. Oh, you didn't? Oh, wow. I don't remember. Okay. So, like, okay. I feel like my parents, maybe my my mom or, you know, because they would always, they loved going to see horror films, like my mom yeah. and dad. And, like, my mom yeah. was such a big Stephen King and Rice fan. Oh, And yeah. I remember even, like, during Interview with the Vampire, I wasn't allowed to watch it for a couple of years because, yeah. you know, she was like, oh, it's too. And I think probably she felt like it was too gory and too sexualized, right. to be honest. Sexualized. Yeah, it's that, very adult. When you these watch kinds it again, movies. like, I, you know, I think I watched it, like, three times this week to get it, like, really, like, fresh in my mind. Wow. Like, this yeah. This is what I do. Yeah. Um, I was like, holy, this is like a really sexualized. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Movie. you're seeing, you're seeing boobs, you're seeing. But the, even like I, the, the voices, like the moaning. Yeah. It is oh, the lot, moaning. Oh my god. Watch, yeah. It's not like you really watch people having sex at all. It's, it's mm-hmm. the sounds. It's the moaning. It's the whole it's the, like. Yeah. This is what it's supposed to be. Like even Absolutely. you know, and it's. Yeah. I think my mom was probably like. Mm. <laughs> yeah keep you from so, that for a little while you you bring up such you know? a good point because yeah this is so i don't want to say erotic but it is so no, it sensual is. i think it is that i would say it's i'm surprised i watched it i think my dad <laughs> just really didn't care he's like it's a it's a fun scary you probably movie i didn't and think anything of it at the time because i didn't th- yeah i i just... knew that i was like whoa especially and we'll get into it with keanu and the three brides i was oh, like i remember no, as a kid one of my being favorite like, scenes whoa and it is kind of hot, I gotta say. Like it is. that scene, I think all, yeah. it is a little exciting, even though <laughs> I it think is we all obviously would very weird. Be Keanu, like in that in that right? kind of way, like three. If I had like three, like oh, I mean, yeah. of those beauties, yeah, yeah and like they're just literally there, coming <laughs> out of the bed, like whoa, mm-hmm. yes. So Apparently you know, even they as a kid, a, I um, knew. Magician for that. Wait, they did? What do you mean? Yeah, I um a trivia on IMDb. Yeah. I read that um Francis Ford Coppola like hired a professional magician to help with that look, to help with like really uh, coming out of the bed and like the like the way that they were like move, wow. the movement with it all to make wow. it look like it was really like and to be honest, that's one of my favorite scenes because I feel you feel like it's like they literally are coming out of nowhere and it's like yes. that bed is just moving and like yes. the forms and just, oh. So, listeners, Sabrina was in a production. So, Interact Theater mm-hmm. Company, uh, Interact Theater Productions, I should say, is in South Orange or mm-hmm. South Orange Maplewood, well, New Jersey, Maple, North Jersey. Yeah, we've been doing Maplewood. more Maplewood yeah, nowadays. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Sabrina and I did a couple shows there. We've talked about it on the show in the past. But yeah, a few years ago, about four years ago, uh, four in years October ago. of 2018, Sabrina did a production of Dracula. So that her presence yes. here just makes this even better. <laughs> Do you want to tell us briefly? how that production was you you even said and i i knew because i remember helping you with social media then yes that production definitely seemed close to this movie close to the bram stoker yes. story because you know yes. there's so many versions and everything this that seemed very much like this right yes i want to say it was that i don't know if nick is listening he'll be like no or <laughs> yes um <laughs> hi nick if you're listening hi, um nick. nick directed the show brilliant yeah. direction um yeah and i'm not just great. saying that because he's my friend but he yeah he always wanted to do it and he did, you know, had such a great eye for it. The set was amazing. It was such a vibe doing that show. And I don't know how to say it in another way, but mm. I was cast as um, the maid, but the maid is not in the movie. Right. There's not the maid's really not like in the movie. movie. Yeah. yeah. And, Mina's maid or Lucy's maid or both? Um, I think I'll. <laughs> Which one was I? <laughs> I think I, I, I just the house. So I guess it was Lucy's. If I was, it might be maid, Lucy. Yeah, because they, were they seem Lucy's to spend house. more time at Lucy's, right? Yeah, yeah. Lucy's yeah. the wealthy so, one. Yes. Nina's the school teacher, right? So yeah, probably mm-hmm. Lucy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I played the maid, and I also played a vixen for that mm. one scene. You know, with that the scene. You know, we were talking with about Parker. Yeah, mm-hmm. Jonathan Harker. And, yeah. um, oh, but as a maid, I become a vampire. So that was always fun oh, at the end. Oh, did you? Okay, yeah, so Dracula so turned seduced, you or Lucy? I know, I got seduced by the vixens. By the vixens? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. All right, a little yeah, bit of change so there. I had, yeah, so I was seduced by the vixens. I become a vampire for like, I guess, a little time until they all get killed. Um, wow, I love it. <laughs> and it was fun because, you, you know, you get the blood. I had the blood all squirted on me at the end. Oh, yeah. And, so how did that just... work, Sabrina? Was there someone backstage like squirting <laughs> you, or like did you do well, it yourself? Well, actually, or how no. Did it work? We, we were we would have a bucket of blood. We'd go back there and just kind of like mess around with it. Mm, but I would always mm. have Ken. There was like a turkey baster. <laughs> Oh I can gosh. literally take the the thing and literally squirt me as a were in the dark backstage. <laughs> I'm like laughing thinking about this right now. So he squirted me. I was like literally like blind <laughs> in yeah. one eye. Like I had to go back out for like a couple more minutes. 
So like wow. here I am trying to still be my character, but like blood running down. It was it was a fun, but you know what? It's, wow. it's good memories. Speaking of Dracula on stage, one of the first plays I remember seeing once I moved to the town I, I mostly grew up in, in Morristown, South Jersey, um, near Philly was Dracula. It was the fall play of my high school. I was oh. I was not in high school yet. I was maybe I think I was in maybe elementary school or maybe mm -hmm. middle school by then. But I remember falling in love with this because I think I I think I might have I can't remember what I saw this movie first or that play. But I I was already of course was interested like, in Dracula. Knew, yeah, because and you, I you know knew. What Dracula is. Yeah. Oh man, like I I've never been in Dracula like you, and you make me hearing these stories and now seeing the movie again. Oh my god, I would love to be in a production, it's fun especially it's I would just... love to play Renfield. Renfield oh. is wild. Um, yes. I wouldn't really want to play Dracula. Maybe Harker, but Harker's a little boring. But like yeah. Renfield has some fun. Or well, Renfield, yeah. Maybe like the three guys, Lucy's, you know, guys like Dr. Seward they were, or... They weren't, I don't think they were in the one that we did. I oh, think were they not Seward in yours? Was in it. Only okay, Dr. yeah, Seward is... Yeah, yeah, Seward's the more Which I love in the, the film. Three. I love the three of them. And we'll, I guess I we'll know. get into that a little bit. I do, I I do like how they go from like, kind of like such side characters. Like they're kind of just for fun, in the you beginning, know, especially the two guys. The, yes. Um, Arthur and Quincy are really yes. just kind of like fun comic relief, but they... And as yeah, we get into, they, I mean, yeah. they are heroes. They like are yeah. in it till the very end. And mm -hmm. yeah, I, I never read the original book. I have a copy. I got it in Ocean City, New Jersey at one of my favorite bookstores, thinking I was so cool as a kid buying this <laughs> massive Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> and I, I got through maybe page five and I'm like, oh, wow, this is over my head. Because it's, I think a lot of it is written in like letter form, like journal, you know, his journal. Right. Yeah. Parker's and it's very journals. dense. And, it's, and like it's hard, the front I was think. real yeah. small, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, yeah, uh, I'll just watch the movie versions, but I appreciate this book. <laughs> it's cool. I'll hold on to it, you know. And but I yeah, like seeing this, Dracula yeah. on stage at my high school, I mean, even with the fog machine and that oh, and yeah. speaking of gender bending, that production years ago in the 90s had uh, a female Renfield and she had Ooh, wild, curly, like Felicity like Carey Russell hair. Yes. And I remember she like winked at like her family in the audience during the bows. And I was like, oh, wow. wow, like I just I just love Renfield. <laughs> what an interesting, it. crazy character, See, like, you know, the most fun yeah. role are probably like Renfield, Lucy, and like Van Helsing. Like yeah. those are some badass, wild roles where you can really like have some fun, you yeah. know. And then of course, you know the like the vixens and all that. You know? Oh but, yeah, the vixens. That's the thing. It's like yeah. you just want to have fun with it. So oh, you really yeah. want to have like, a good that. character role. But you know what? Like the maid ended up being a fun character role that I didn't expect. Oh yeah, and, you know. That's and then great. I was able to be a vixen, so I got like kind of the best of both worlds. I was able. to Oh, I wish I got to both. see it. Do you know if it's like recorded somewhere? I'm sure, you know, just ask Nick. All right, I'll ask <laughs> sure. Nick. Nick, if you're listening, said, yeah. send me that link, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Here occurred the frightening and shocking history of Prince Dracula and the woman he loved. I have crossed oceans of time to find you. <sighs> Listeners, I'm going to set the scene. This is what was going on 30 years ago, November 1992. Now, mm. this film came out Friday the 13th, November mm. 13th in 1992. I was born Friday the 13th, so... Ah, even, even another reason I know, why you are right? here. Exactly. Right? Fate, mm -hmm. and, and it was a full moon this week for election day. Yeah, so the blood fate moon. Is the just, blood moon yes. or eclipse. Now, I just wrote that in my notes, too. I was like, oh, yeah. the timing. Right? Yes. Everything is just working, right? Okay. Yes. So this is some fun pop culture stuff that was going on, okay? So on the news side, Bill Clinton was just elected the new president that year. Mm. He had defeated George H.W. Bush. So he started his first term. On the music side... I, I had to Google the song because I'm like, what is this? And I sort of, <laughs> I kind of remembered the number one song for a few weeks, including this week, was By the Heights. It was called How Do You Talk to an Angel? Do you remember that? How do you talk to an oh, yes. angel? It's oh very God. like like late 80s, that. early 90s rock, it's right? It's, yes. it's, a, yes. it's an era of music that like... Some songs like were hits, rock. but a lot of it, it yeah, rock. like soft rock, mm -hmm. totally. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what is this song? I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of <laughs> remember that. So that was the number one song, which I, wow. I feel like also just, I that's why I love talking about other stuff that was out because, you know, you love a movie like this, but then when you compare it to what was popular at the time, you're like, oh wow, okay, that, that yeah. now puts it into a different perspective, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah. okay, we're in the soft rock, early 90s. Okay, I'm, I'm feeling you, it, right? But if you hear the end credit song, it kind of makes sense. Annie yes, Lennox. Yes, absolutely. Annie yeah. Lennox, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what was it called? Love Song for a Vampire, I yes. believe? I think, yes. Yes. Which 
is a little corny. I don't, yeah. Right? I and mean, I so love Annie I Lennox. Love, I love Annie Lennox. Eurythmics, oh. But yeah, it's oh, a little... Yeah. But but this movie, now with adult eyes, is at times a little corny, it, a little yeah. campy, campy, right? So it works. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it works. But yeah. yes, that was a big song too. But so mm-hmm. another big song that had come out uh, just a week or so prior to this was Whitney Houston's cover of I Will Always Love You. Oh, so that was well, huge. The Bodyguard yeah. was about to come out. I'll yep. be talking about that mm-hmm. later. Yes. So that was a big thing. On the TV side... The British comedy show, Absolutely Fabulous, you know, Ab Fab, yes. that mm-hmm. had just premiered on the BBC in oh, November wow. of 1992. Nickelodeon was just about, it was, uh. I think, the, this same weekend, Nickelodeon was about to present the first ever Kids' Choice Awards. I thought that was funny. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Right? That yeah. was the thing in our youth. And I thought this was really interesting. An episode of Captain Planet, obviously the famous animated show, mm-hmm. an episode titled A Formula for Hate had aired right around this time, November 1992, I think just a couple days after this movie came out, and it became the first episode in American children's animated series to directly deal with the HIV AIDS pandemic. Oh, so interesting. thought that was a really interesting fun fact. I had yeah. no idea, but yeah. yeah, I guess it was the first kids show to really talk about that, right? And then over on the movie side, some popular movies. So I thought this was fun. This movie came out the same day, November 13th, same day Uh as Love Potion Number 9 with Sandra Bullock and Tate Donovan. Do you remember that one? Yes, I do. Little small rom-com back in the day. Mm -hmm. And it also came out, and it's so funny because this would never happen nowadays, came out the same day as Aladdin, Disney's animated (gasps) Aladdin. That was limited. It was limited in only two theaters starting November 13th and then went super wide Thanksgiving. Isn't that weird? Disney would never now do a limited release. I've never heard of Disney ever doing like a limited release like that. Right? Isn't that crazy? Just in like, was it New York or like? I think it was just one New York theater and one LA theater, I believe. Mm. And that, yeah, that's the one with Robin Williams, of course, the famous animated film. I love Aladdin. Oh my gosh, I just want to make I love Aladdin, right? I actually forgot that turned 30. I mean, that is tempting to talk about that one as well. So many good movies of this time. So, yeah, so that was the big stuff that had just come out. Other popular movies were Passenger 57 with Wesley Snipes, A River runs through it with brad mm, pitt under yes. siege with steven seagal and the mighty ducks another disney <laughs> oh, super hit ducks. right yeah so those were all in the top five josh jackson <laughs> josh jackson mm. absolutely with emilio and a mm-hmm. whole bunch of kids i know but so that was all the popular stuff going on now i'm going to quickly throw it over to you sabrina in your own words tell us you know you've been in the show you've seen this movie a bunch oh, of times gosh. tell us for <laughs> anyone out there who lives under a rock I, I who mean... does not know this classic story <laughs> I feel like this person about Roman and Juliet too. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know, right? That's so true. <laughs> but in your own words, briefly tell us a little, a little mini description of Dracula. What's it about? Okay, so if we're going to talk about just how the movie is about, you know, mm-hmm. um, Francis Ford Coppola's version, right. um, I would say it's a gothic, you know, love romantic film. Yeah. Um, it's not really like it is horror, but it's not going to be your typical vampire horror film. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you have, you know, Count Dracula, I guess if that you want to call him that, or his, you know, name Vlad. Very official, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he goes to war, and this is back in, like, when he was a human form. And, yeah. you know, I guess he comes back and his wife, you know, thought that he died. So she ends up taking her own life because she couldn't oh, live yeah. without him. And then he curses the church, um, you know, damns everything to hell. And mm-hmm. then I guess... Uh, whatever I, I happens know. to him happens and he becomes Dracula, you know? Like the, he stabs the, the, a big yeah, cross and a cross. bunch of blood shoots <laughs> starts, out and I don't yeah. know where the blood came from, so but okay. Yeah, I know, yeah. right. So like yeah. the evil just pours cool out, effect. the evil pours yeah. out, I guess, and turns him into mm. this creature, this monster. Yeah. And um, then years years later, what is it, like 400 years later or something like that? Right. I don't even know what uh-huh. it was. Um, in the late 1800s. Yep. Um, you have Jonathan Harker, who's like a lawyer, has to go mm-hmm. and like sign a deal with him, you know, to give him some land, you know, because he wants to purchase some land in England. Yeah. And he notices that he has a picture of Mina, who Jonathan mm-hmm. Harker is engaged to. And mm-hmm. Mina, it looks, is he thinks Mina is his resur- like, um, reincarnated wife, Elisabetta mm-hmm. from the Romanian times. Yeah. So he becomes obsessed and he's like, I have to have her. And so he imprisons, you know, Jonathan Harker. Um, but you also kind of know that he does things to people who have visited him, like Renfield, like Renfield right. finally is like in a, 
a sane asylum. So, you yes. know, he does something to them. Because Renfield used to do what Harker yes. does. Am yeah, I right? The they, they, like, mm -hmm. used to work together. Yes. Renfield went to Count Dracula's crazy yeah. castle, I guess, to happens, start the process. But we but... don't know. He went mad, mm -hmm. most likely because he saw what Harker then sees, right? So, right. But it's, it's funny how they're just like, yeah, he went crazy. Escaped, but now you got to go. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. And so... Oh and yeah, then, that's the thing. I guess yeah, I guess Renfield escaped. I know he kind of like. But I guess would, like, but maybe because, how would Dracula have let him escape? I guess yeah, it is interesting. I don't know. These yeah, are the, okay. The little loopholes that you think about. You're yeah. Like, hmm. And mm -hmm. then so Jonathan Harker stays there. He gets you know seduced by the the brides of Dracula. You know, aka you know Monica Bellucci and. <laughs> Yes. Um, oh, yeah. These just, women are fierce. Yes, One even has snakes women. in her yes, hair, like Medusa. Medusa yeah. They're very, like, uh -huh. gypsy esque Romanian, yes. which I really love um, the whole look of it. Uh -huh. And then you have uh -huh. Mina and Lucy, who are friends. And Lucy's mm -hmm. this wealthy, what, aristocratic kind of mm -hmm. gem party society. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love Sadie Frost in it. I think she's oh, perfect for the role. She's fantastic. Um, and she, Electric. you know, she likes to flirt. So she flirts with these three men, these three suitors. And. Mm -hmm. She, then she becomes engaged to um one of them and chaos kind yes. of ensues basically so dracula comes to england because he thinks mina is his reincarnated wife so right. he goes to pursue her and then chaos mm -hmm. ensues you know basically long story short you know we know what happens van helsing comes in because lucy's yes. you know been bitten because mm -hmm. all this fun stuff and yeah and then we go forward and then yeah and then the van tragic helsing has to help you know get things back to normal yeah. Right? yeah yeah and then mina you know he seduces mina i guess she forgets about harker for a little bit and then oh, yeah. <laughs> harker totally comes back yeah yeah and then um they get married he gets you know and then draco gets me more you know upset and pissed and um they go back to his castle and they kind of take their yeah. revenge and then there's I love the, that ending. The ending is, I know, but it's it's kind of gives me very Romeo and Juliet vibes as well mm -hmm. because it's like I you totally wonder, agree. I want to know like what what you think happens after like once the mm. end credits roll. Do you think she takes her life, or do you think she goes on with her life? That's such a great question, I was Sabrina. About that. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Yeah, because you know what's like, also so funny? Yeah. I was because I just rewatched it for the first time, like I said, in years, just this mm -hmm. week. And when it ended, I've always loved that ending. I've, I've, yeah. I basically once Lucy is bitten, and when she's like, uh, we'll talk about it, but in that iconic oh scene gosh. in the white, I mean, from that, from that point to the end, it's like for me, it's like such a great movie. Yes. As a kid, I was on the edge of my yes. seat, like that last hour or yes. so. Amazing. I know, it is a long movie, and but yes. It, it, you know, it's long, but, but when actually... When Helsing comes in, it's like, yeah. it, it really picks up, in my opinion. You know, it's long, but I have to tell you, watching it, it with adult yeah. eyes, I feel like, you know, we'll talk about what we love, and there's some things that we don't love. Um, it's not a perfect movie, but it's really, no. really good. A lot of hard work, and you it's can feel that. It's a beautiful movie to right? watch. Beautiful like, the cinematography and te is technically, the colors, oh my god, yeah, the costumes, lights, the colors. Oh my god, the, yeah. The we, whole aesthetic. And I want to get beautiful. your thoughts on like certain yeah. favorite, yeah, yes. moments, favorite costumes, yes. favorite looks, right? Because oh, it's yes. amazing what they did. But I have to say, the editing, I don't love because at times it's so abrupt that I'm like, okay, I feel like we definitely had more of a scene there, but yes. we just cut right. Did you feel that too when you when you watch that? Not all the time, but sometimes. Certain it's scenes. Just, I see that. Yeah. yeah. I can tell. And it I think it actually, like, yeah. I'm surprised it wasn't longer. Longer. Because it's only maybe. about like two hours and maybe eight minutes. I think it's 128 minutes. And I don't know, rewatching it, I'm like, whoa, that was just so abrupt here and there. That I'm like, I think we had more to show, but they just really wanted to, you know, so they could have let it yeah. breathe a little bit more, but some scenes yeah. go on a little too long. So... You know, but that that ending, oh my god, when the when you know they're at, like you said they're at the castle. Mm -hmm. I know we're jumping around a little bit, but they're at the castle. He is in such scary, like old, Ugh. like kind of wolf demon makeup. It's amazing in that beautiful, like kind of yes. robe he's in. He busts out of that box and mm -hmm. like they they stab him. And Mina by this point is totally like possessed. Well, she's right. Well, yeah, because she's already formed as like a vampire. She's already basically. formed. And do you want to do yeah. you want to hear a personal fun fact? Yeah, I'm just gonna say it right now, everybody. So I loved this movie so much as a kid mm -hmm. that, okay, let's say, okay, my sister was definitely alive. She was definitely a few years old. We're four years apart. So I was maybe, I don't know, somewhere between seven or eight and like 10 or 11, somewhere around that time. 
We were out at a park somewhere, my parents and my sister and I. I don't know what we were doing. I feel like we went to like a park before going out to dinner or something. Mm -hmm. And I love this movie so much, guys, that that scene towards the end, what we're talking about, where, um, you know, it's kind of like a, a chase, like the, the, the men on horseback are yes. trying to catch up to Dracula's yes. carriage. And he's, you know, and he knows Mina's there. And like, you know, there's a lot. It's, the sun is rising yes, setting it's that, like, the there's a lot like, going on it's chaotic. very orange yes. oh the the mm -hmm. score is um, oh. the, the entire soundtrack is amazing but yes it is. it's so thrilling and it's and so mm -hmm. mina is like conjure i think she is doing like a spell she's shouting out this romanian yes. chant right which i think is making the sunset and her eyes are like red yes I, yes that's what I, and it's that's what i took from it too because yes i i took it that yeah. like even though it's kind of daytime and i'm getting sort of a morning vibe she's like speeding up time so that the yes. sun can set so that dracula that's can it. be out and about right, right? Yeah. so she's like doing this thing and there's like these cool like bluish greenish like rings that are like shooting out of her like you know it's very mm -hmm. crazy but that chant she does it's just sort of gibberish to me. I did that. I just out of nowhere, I was like, I was like on sort of like an edge of of a hill. And I just was like, I am feeling my Winona self. I just was like, da, 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 you know, and using oh my, my hands and gosh, doing it just like she does. I love that. I and my parents probably looked at me and were like, God, this kid is so weird. <laughs> and my sister was off, whatever. But I was just like, oh, this is very Winona right here. You know, because when you're young, you pick up on weird things like that, like that she oh. was up on a ledge, you know. Yeah. And so I do this chant and I'm like, that was cool. And I turn around and this like teen young adult couple are in their car and they are looking at me, Sabrina, like, what the fuck? And I, I just remember me being like, oh, awkward. And I just like walked and hid like amongst the cars, like, oh my God, I did not know there was oh like gosh. someone in that car right there. I thought I was just having like not a private moment. So long story short, yeah, I was. It would be even amazing, even more mm -hmm. amazing if like that couple listens to their your podcast and hears. Oh this. my and god, like, I remember that kid. <laughs> oh my god, I hope that would be please, such a full fate, circle moment. Mother please. Nature, <laughs> yes. Send this episode to them. Hopefully, they're still together and they'll listen to it the next time they're in their car <laughs> and they'll be like, "Oh my god, I remember that weird kid." Like. I mean, <laughs> Because you're probably not even saying something right. You're probably just, yes. you know. They're like, yeah. oh, this kid is, like, special. Um, so, yeah. So, that's my little <laughs> personal fun fact. But, no, let's uh, let's answer. I want to answer your question. Yes. So, she, she has this moment where with Dracula, the love of her life, mm -hmm. the, probably one of the only, like, CGI moments. Because I think a lot of the effects oh, were yeah, practical. Oh, yeah. He doesn't. Right? He didn't do any. The only special he didn't effect do... I think was the ring of fire, that blue fire. Okay. Yep. The That's the blue stuff. Red. And then mm -hmm. and then I bet. Well, maybe yeah. Maybe they just had Gary Oldman lying there with that scary like kind of lion makeup, and then just had him lay on lay in the same spot without the makeup, maybe. and they just faded. Right. Yeah. Which and that you know. But so he he goes back to how he looked at the very beginning of the film, like you said yep. in the fourteen hundreds. Mm -hmm. He the the sword, the knife is like in him. Uh, when he when he says give me peace right it's yeah. beautiful it's actually so sad it is and she's like so in love with him and her hair is all like kind of like yours like super wavy and oh, like yeah. you know crazy <laughs> and she kisses him and he says give me peace mm -hmm. and she then okay i'm yeah. no longer like changing i'm just gonna force this knife through mm -hmm. you even more and then it's silent right the music yes. has stopped yeah she's sad very romeo and juliet yes totally. that's what i'm saying very claire it danes yes very because they're in the church and then yep. and then instead of killing herself she pulls that sword out somehow with amazing strength that knife mm -hmm. i should say it's I like know. a big like... knife <laughs> and chops his head off and then looks up at that beautiful mural of, of them, vlad and, and elizabeth yeah right yeah up there and for years i thought oh my gosh now that he's dead, the mural is like sort of now magically being finished and his legs are like forming. But actually, it's not at all. I made that up. <laughs> but I, I kind of wish that, that happened. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I kind of wish like now that, they like, are they together. Were, like together. like yeah. Eliz Elizabeth uh, died years yeah. ago. He's mm -hmm. now finally dead. And uh, now they live up in this beautiful ceiling. Thanks so much for watching. Next week will be part two of this discussion. And in the meantime, please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram. I'm